Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to the worst of 2021. I don't love doing videos like this. I just wanna put that out there and make this formal apology to anyone offended by me hating these products. I just think it's good to remember that not everything works for everybody the same. And I think it's good to reflect as we come to start a new year, I think it's good to look back on our bad decisions, our regrets, our failures, because a problem shared is a problem halved. And I think we could all use a little bit of reflection, not only on the positive, but also on what wasn't so great. So maybe we can learn from it and avoid some of these products in the future. I think we should make wiser decisions in 2022 than some of these products. That's what I'm saying. So just so you know, a lot of the products I'm gonna be mentioning in today's video, I don't have because I tried to get rid of them as soon as possible. So I will be displaying a photo instead of holding up the actual product because I can't stand to be near them any longer. So one of such products is the Lancome Dull Mascara. Oh, this is a big disappointment for me because I love a Lancome Mascara and I did not love this one. Now, this wasn't a hate. I just wanna throw that out there. This was just a, a strong dislike, okay? I just, it just did nothing for me. And I think the extra disappointment about it came from the fact that I had really high hopes for this mascara. I was very excited about it. I loved the look of the wand. It looked like it was gonna hug my lash line. It looked like it was gonna give me a lovely fluttery lash. I had expectations of it to be similar to the Charlotte Tilbury mascara that won my heart. And then it was such a flop and a disappointment. It was just an expectations versus reality mismatch is what I'm saying. And I think lots of people love this mascara. It just obviously doesn't give me what I want from a mascara. And I was slightly disappointed that Zendaya didn't like turn up and deliver it personally to my door, but that was maybe just me, a slight misunderstanding about the advertising, which is, you know, something for them to work on in future campaigns. Second of all, now this is a product that I'm fairly happy to say I fully hated. And this is the ABH Iced Out Highlight. I mean, I just don't know what happened here. What happened? Right, because here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this one. The Amreezy Highlight that ABH did, which was looked the same as it had the same pattern and it was apparently the same formula it was such a hit it was such a stunning highlight like when that came out people lost their minds it was it as far as like if you wanted a beaming highlight that was it it was phenomenal people were be make it permanent please make that formula permanent and they were like okay we're gonna do it we're gonna bring out a highlight in that formula you all loved and then they made it really strange like we liked that formula, we loved the look of it, we thought it was beautiful. We didn't ask for it to be green. I don't know where the miscommunication happened there, but it was, it was, I don't know. I don't understand it is what I'm saying. I don't know any, I haven't seen anybody like it. I, please let me know in the comment section down below if it works for you, if you love it, please let me know. Cause they, I'm sure that as all, people are so, feel so differently about makeup and on, on a much different, a much lighter skin tone, maybe it wouldn't have pulled quite so green on you, please let us know if there's some light in the darkness when it comes to this highlight. I'm, I really hope someone out there loves it, but I definitely don't. It looked really weird and hideous on me, and it was such a weird color, I just couldn't understand who it was for, you know? It was just an, uh, it was a really serious, we got mixed messages here, we, we got crossed wires. We wanted the Amrezy one. We wanted more along those lines, but maybe different shades and make it permanent. We didn't, we didn't want this. It was not good. We did not like it. Next up, one that I know lots of people did like, but I just did not. And this is the KVD Good Apple Balm Foundation. I didn't like this at all. I didn't really love a cream foundation. So that's number one. If you do love a cream foundation, maybe it was much more for you. This definitely just was not for me. It was much too thick and heavy. I found it tricky to apply and it just looked really cakey and it soaked into every line and uh, every line on my face but lines that I swear weren't on my face 
before I put that, it gave me new ones. Furious, I was. So as I said at the time, I think for a much younger person than me who loves a really full coverage and who likes that type of formula, I think, or maybe in photography it will work, it would look a lot better on camera than it does in person, I don't know. But it did not look good on me, is what I'm saying. That was a, a big old fat fail for me. Another product that shone a nice bright torch on every imperfection on my face was the Huda Glowish Luminous Powder, which I do still have, I don't know why, maybe just solely for this video. I don't understand it, is what I'm saying. The shades are a little confusing and strange, but the fact that this is like a whole, supposed, like it was almost like supposed to be a foundation, but it's like literally met metallic. I don't know, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with this, is what I'm saying to you. It's not like, I mean, if it was like a glow from within, I don't know, that would be a great idea to put it, apply it over the whole face but maybe you know the perimeters I'm saying I, I just don't know how it works I don't understand how it works because for me if I was going to use this as a foundation I'd have to avoid the entire center plane of my face otherwise it's gonna you're gonna look shiny and tin manny um but then I don't know how you're gonna make this work with other products because it's a powder and it's not really it's not a highlight either that doesn't really work because it's like skin toned and yeah it's neither here nor there and I wish it was nowhere, is what I'm saying. That was a bit harsh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and while I'm being blocked from Huda Beauty, I may as well complete the brand destruction that I'm doing in this video by talking about the blushes. This is my next most hated product. Um, the issue I have with these is one, the texture feels horrible. Like it li literally feels horrible. It feels rough which isn't really a, a word that I like to associate with my makeup. If I feel something and it feels rough, it doesn't fill me with like joy and, and happiness to apply it. That's my first thing. The colors are a little odd. They appear just really chalky on the skin to me. They take quite a lot of building up. And I also like, I find them quite chalky and flat but they're supposed to be a luminous, natural glowing blush. And I'm just so confused because that's just not what I'm getting at all. So I think it's not to say that these are terrible. Also, they're minuscule. That's the next thing. They are tiny. So I thought that was a bit odd because I mean, even fitting a blush brush in here was a little bit tricky. It's almost the size of my finger. I just, uh, I, yeah. I don't know why that they happened, but they did, they did. Next up, a product I did actually think I still owned, but I cannot find it anywhere, but these are the Patrick Tarr Contour Bronze Duos. Now, let's just start off by saying, these are, they really end up being a fail for me because I just can't make them work, okay? So I bought two different shades of this. Both formulas in here, both the bronzer and the cream contour, are good formulas. That's the positive. I think the cream contour blended nicely into the skin. It was a nice amount of opacity. It was easy to work with. You get a lot of payoff. You don't need a lot. And the bronzer was a lovely finish, very natural on the skin. Again, easy to blend. The issue I had with these was the undertones. If you watch my initial video and then I bought another shade trying to see if, if that was going to work better, is there's just no combination that works if I get the lighter shade then it was like the contour looked so grey like literally looked like ash grey on me it looked terrible it was just much 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 too cool and grey on me so then I got a deeper duo which made the contour just about work but then the bronzer was not at all my shade so I just feel like the pairings are off here I think some of the pairings are off some of the contours are too grey and therefore there's just nothing it just doesn't really work in any way shape or form for me anyway I'm sure there are other people with different skin tones who found a perfect one that where they liked both products but that person was not me and I do know oh, Ah, oh, there's definitely a hair on me. <laughs> and I do know I was not the only one there because I know that Morgan Turner had the same issue um, because we spoke about it. But yeah, it was just, it, I feel like the combos just weren't quite correct. Next up, let's talk about this new shade of the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. Now, 
First up, here's the first issue. They reformulated like literally one of, if not their best product for literally no reason. I mean, I'm sure there was a reason, but no good reason, no good reason as far as I can see. They reformulated it and everyone is fuming about it and they keep doing it. They did it to their powders as well. And, and then their blushes. What's happening, Chanel? Why are you doing this to us? Mm. So I'm not sure what's going on there with the reformulation of like our best products and actually the down formulation then making everything worse which no one understands why that's happening so that's your first issue they reformulated like their absolute best product that everybody loved that we've been asking for years we need more shades okay we love it great product thanks but need more shades there's only three people can use that one so yeah we asked for more shades first of all they completely destroyed the product so actually most of us no longer wanted the new shades because we didn't like the formulation of this new one but those of you or those of us who are still hanging in there and actually some people must have liked the new reformulation surely there must be some people and those people were still you know we still want a new shade please so they gave us this which Initially, I mean, it does look decently deeper than the original. We'll say that. The issue here is this new formulation is so sheer, it doesn't really matter how deep the colour is because you're going to have to use an entire container of it to get it to look anywhere near that deep. So it's actually when you swatch them together, they're pretty much the same colour and it doesn't, you can see it doesn't really build up either. You can put as much as you like. It's just really going to stay that same colour that's really you know, deeper than the original one. And now it's in a worse formula and it doesn't smell as nice. <sighs> Sad times. Next up, I didn't want to talk about this product because I don't want to kick a horse when it's down. Is that the expression? Kick a horse, kick a puppy, kick someone when they're lying down. So that expression, you know the one. I didn't want to do that, but at the same time, it's like, it, you know, I don't know, is it better or worse to talk about a brand who no longer exists or to slander one that's still going? I don't know, you tell me. But we're going to talk about the Becca Dewing Skin tint skin what was it called dewing tint i believe it was the dewing tint <gasps> luckily this is one of the few products in this video i didn't spend any money on because i had a sample of it with some other products that i ordered so i i used a few i got some different shades you know blister pack type situation and i tried it a couple of times this is ba this is what it is. It was essentially the liquid version of this, but worse. This stuff, I put this on my face, luckily on a day where I didn't have to leave the house. I think it might have been during lockdown, which, you know, small blessings every cloud. I literally looked like the shiniest tin man. It was almost it was like a liquid highlighter, and I was so confused. I'm supposed to put this all over my face, and it was sticky. It was so sticky. And if I touched my face, it literally lifted off and left like fingerprints oh it was not a good day for me at all but it was a good day I was just really really glad that I hadn't bought it because now I don't want to say that that was the downfall of Becca because obviously they had already decided to close when that product came out but if anything was going to literally like finish them off that that was going to do it next up we have another mascara from Lancome and now I'm starting to think I need to rethink whether Lancome actually is my favorite mascara brand because I, I don't think I can possibly continue to say that's the case anymore because I love one from the brand and I hate two so it seems like like actually I don't really like them as a mascara brand so I need to eliminate that thought from my brain because this is the Long Commissure Big Extra Black. Now I talked about this I think it was my November fails, faves and fails and that was the fail. It was a total fail. I really had high hopes for that mascara. I thought it was going to be Long Commissure Big, exactly that, but extra black because that is what was advertised to me. I thought it was gonna be the same formula, the same bristles, the same wand, the same phenomenal big fat lashes that I loved about that mascara for so long. It was just gonna be a little bit more richly black, but it was not. It was a totally different rubbish mascara that did nothing, like it just didn't give me anything I wanted. It didn't give me the big fat dramatic volume. It didn't give me lift. It gave me messy, 
haphazard about the play slashes that were no blacker than anything. This is my main issue. This was, it was no blacker than any of the others, really. I don't understand what was happening. I was outraged because I really had high hopes and they were dashed beyond repair. And now last, but by no means least, this is one I'm sure many of you will remember me disliking. And this is the Fenty Gloss Heat. The Heat Gloss. What is its name? The Gloss Bomb Heat, okay? This is the original one, the cherry. When I saw pictures of this when it first came out, I was really excited for it. I thought it's going to be one of those little tingly, glosses it looked a gorgeous color it's gonna give me a gorgeous cherry pouty juicy lips that's what i thought was going to happen it was going to be my go-to lip color for summer and instead it burns like fight like you're allergic to it that's what it feels like it burns when they say heat they're not talking about a warming sensation they're talking burning fire burning fire on your lips for really no visible effect that I could notice other than maybe your lips bleeding. No, they didn't bleed. I take that back. Don't see me. But they felt like they wanted to. They felt like they wanted to just leap straight off my face. So all this did for me was give me like a shiny lip. Sure. Okay. I'll admit that it did make my lips shinier. It didn't make them any bigger. It hurt and there's no colour to it, like basically whatsoever. There's a little bit of colour to it. When I swatch it, you can see there's something there, but when that goes on your lips, you, it looks like nothing. There's certainly no like opacity or, or kind of coverage to the gloss. Oh, it does smell nice though. I will give it that, it does smell nice. But essentially all of the pain is for nothing because you, you'd be much better off, in my opinion, using the original gloss, not having burning, probably getting more colour to your lips and ha not having regret afterwards because your lips hurt and you want to cry now and what, who was it for? It's also very gritty, gritty and bits of glitter in it. I just wasn't a big fan wasn't a big fan to be honest. So there you have it. Those were my 10 least loved products of 2021. Please try and remember this video is just for a bit of fun. It's not meant to insult anyone or upset anyone. If you love any of these products or they're your favorite, that I just, I love that. I love that they worked out better for you because if you spent your money on these, of course I want them to work beautifully for you. All I'm saying is they did not work so beautifully for me and I'm sorry about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise take care for now, bye 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 bye.